Hello. Welcome. My name is Anahid Al Hardan. I'm an assistant professor of sociology at the American University of Beirut. I'm currently a principal investigator on Afro-Asian Futurist Past, which is a research program funded by the Andrew Mellon Foundation. We are um, a group of interdisciplinary scholars interested in social and political theory and literary cultures of the decolonization era. What we are also trying to do is to build a repository of primary source documents in our university libraries in order to enable this kind of research by scholars from this part of the world, but also from all over the world. In 1955, an international conference takes place in Bandung, Indonesia, and that conference is attended by African and Asian newly decolonized states, as well as leaders of anti-colonial movements that are in the process of gaining independence. So here you see rare footage from the era, from the Bandung conference. You see the arrival of the statesmen, you see the flags, the high diplomacy, but beyond that, this really becomes the beginning of a moment in history that gives way to various activists, intellectuals and writers connecting with each other. In 1957, Egypt organizes the first Afro-Asian People's Solidarity Organization Conference, which is a sequel to Bandung. The conference is portrayed as a meeting point of people's representatives as opposed to heads of states. And the conference leads to the establishment of the Afro-Asian People's Solidarity Organization in Cairo, um, as well as various associations. And through these various associations, there were meetings that were organized based on women activists, youth activists, and writers of the African-Asian world. And as a result of these meetings and these networks, there were also publications of these associations. So just thinking about these activists and thinkers and writers in terms of a top-down state model really does a disservice to the legacy of this era and to the huge amount of intellectual, theoretical and literary material that it has left us to deal with today. Although this archive was published in this part of the world, although it was published in Arabic as well as English and French today, it simply does not exist in this part of the world. The way we're building this archive is that we're actually going out to secondhand book dealers in Beirut and in Cairo. We are looking through the various secondhand bookshops, the, the old markets, and we are asking various publishers, we are tapping into various networks, and we are trying to purchase this material. We have begun working on this project in a first pilot phase through generous funding from the Arab German Young Academy of Sciences and Humanities. The nature of the archive we're building, the fact it is on a period which is largely neglected, which is largely understudied and ignored for various reasons, makes it even more pressing and urgent. So our idea is that by returning to the materials generated around the Afro-Asian People's Solidarity Organization, we can generate a different way of theorizing and understanding the world based on the knowledge. Um, in this rich material and archive, that has really not been given the attention it deserves and that has the potential to generate a novel, social sciences and humanities. An archive which would be of and for the Arab world, but an archive which would also be open to internationals from all over the world to come and engage in this very important research and recover this legacy.